So I have over here this game, it's called The Contender, and let's just say it's a way that makes politics fun. And I just want to say something, the politics that's going on in today's generation, it really bothers me because, the, you know, I find that the politicians, they battle based on hatred, not based on the real issues at hand, and this game kind of keeps it clean, you know, of course, People are allowed to disagree and people are allowed to formulate their own opinions, but what we have today, in my opinion, goes a little bit too far. And the contender just kind of cleans it up, makes it fun, and well, let's get playing. So in the game, we have the cards. It's really simple. You have two decks of cards. The first deck is the red deck, or well, I call it the red deck, but these are, ah, uh, okay, these are the political issues. I'll show you them in a minute, and these are the actual playing cards, and as you could see, huge amount of playing cards. So let's check it out. Let's take a sample over here, and let's play the contender. So every player gets five playing cards. Ooh, and I'm just going to take one, two, three, four, five playing cards, and I'm going to show you the judge or the politician, as we like to call it, because, you know, if this is a political game, let's get all fun. So the, polit the head politician will present a political issue, in this case terrorism, there's a small paragraph on it, and then after you understand what you're fighting for, everyone basically goes around the table and battles out what they feel terrorism is. Now in my hand, right now I have a bunch of distract cards um, and I have one attack card. So these basically allow me to do different things and the game is over when every person plays three parts of the debate or three cards in the debate. So for example, I may choose to play, well this one here looks kind of good, and I'll use this word terrorism, I fill in the blank. Terrorism won't be an issue when we live in space. So that sounds really good, and I look at the rest of mine, and, well, it doesn't really fit into it, so I'm going to take a card and pass, and then someone else goes, and I may just, um, you know, play another card that says, you know, let's say they play something that I disagree with, so I say, oh, or let's say something strong, so I may use a distract card, oh no, I'm not falling for this again, and then again I pick up another card and I just keep playing until I have three cards on the table, and then the person who's the, what we call it, lead politician will decide who has the better debate. Now this game, we played it the first time like this, and it was, I can't tell you how much fun it was, but then we decided, well, my family is very into, as I like to call them, heated debates, so we did like this, we actually changed the rules a little bit. We put them off to the side, and then we played, you know, the winner played the card, outsourcing. We read it, and then this time, instead of just playing three cards, we just kept going. Everyone at the table just kept putting out cards, what they felt was the win, and by the time we were done, we literally had like 30 cards in the center, and it was hilarious, because there was no end to the debate. I could play an attack card, the player could play the attack card, we could play... Uh, 10 fact cards and we just kept playing and playing and playing until the head politician decided that they have a winner. So that was really a lot of fun to play because you never know where the tables were turning. Another way I would suggest playing is let's say you're playing in a classroom because you know what? This is a great classroom game. These issues are all real. The auto industry, this is a real issue. Um, income inequality, this is something that, you know, is huge for something that I am a huge, you know, very passionate about. So in a classroom, what I would do is take this game and give everyone 10 cards. So I have five, so I take one, two, three, four, five. Ah, I have five cards here. This way kids really have enough, because I want this debate to be real. So I have five cards in my hand, so I really have a lot of topics to go through. And then, just like before, it would be a debate, but we would take turns, well, you know, I never, let's say it says, I never asked for income, I never asked for income inequality. Now, it's not stopping there. As a player in the classroom, I'd say I never asked for it because, let's say, well, my parents came from a not wealthy background and they built themselves up and so you know what? It can be done. And then, um... And the next player may play, well, America is tired of hearing politicians bicker about income inequality. Let's figure out a way to actually solve the issue at hand. And again, I'm telling the kids, you know what? Use your imagination. Here are the cards you're dealt with. Here's the political issue. Now it's time for you guys to 
use what you're dealt with, but use your imagination and to put a level of depth into this game. The Contender is a great game, and like I showed you before, here's just a small stack of cards. Here's another small stack. This game is filled with hundreds of cards that are all based on politics and if you look closely this is a quote by Paul Ryan we have John F. Kennedy, Jimmy Carter, James Madison, George W. Bush these are real people who dealt with real politics and the contender kind of just takes these issues and puts it into a game form and here are just three ways number one you could play by the rules number two you could just have fun with the heated debate and number three you can actually bring political issues for your class to actually learn about. Another fun, you know, just a little fun thing is actually take something, corporate handouts, and have the kids actually study it for a day or do homework on it and come back the next day so now they know more about the issue and then they can actually do the same thing with 10 cards and debate it in a whole new way. So the contender is just a great game to actually take politics and turn it into something more than just this, you know, ugliness that we have going around. It, it changes it into, you know, a fun way to incorporate it into the classroom. Just one tip, when I did get these cards, I did not mix it well enough because like I said, it's a huge deck. Um, I'm just going to point out it is very, very important. We learned that, you know, in one of our first few games, take the cards, you know, divvy them up into piles and just keep shuffling. And it may take a few games of play and still they're not all shuffled well enough, but it's at least better than it was. Cause like, I remember someone had like all the distract cards and it was like someone else had all the attack cards. And so the playing level wasn't so fair. So just kind of shuffle it well, because it will really help your gameplay. Um, if you like, you know, the game, The Contender, and want to, you know, learn, just learn and have fun learning, well then definitely like my video. Let me know what you think. Feel free to subscribe because I'm all here about hands-on education, and The Contender is just a fun way to bring in politics, debates, and you know what? Even fourth and fifth grade classes can just really enjoy this and have tons and tons of fun with politics because you know what? Politics is what America is all about, so definitely subscribe, like, let me know what you think. I'm going to leave the link to this below because I really, really think this is a must-have to any classroom that focuses on American history. It is a great, great game and feel free, you know, trace this card. If there's, you know, obviously society is always evolving. Bring in your own issues, bring in the issues that you're learning and just use these cards because the contender is one of those games that is so much fun to play and the best part about it, the bigger the group, the more fun it is. Happy playing.